that would be the pull of gravity. That would be how it's in, the velocity is overtaking its, uh, the, the gravity, if it's going to shoot up into the air. By the way, is this shooting off from a height of anything or from the ground? What do you think? Ground. Light ground. Because there's no constant. There is no constant. If it was like plus 500, you know, that would that'd be kind of cool. We shoot off of a cliff. <coughs> or if we had negative 350, it'd be, we shoot from under the ground and it shoots up. Probably kill some people, but whatever. <laughs> it was pretty. <laughs> uh, anyway, can we do a couple things? Firstly, can we find out the maximum height? Can you find the max height? Why would you, why would you want to find out the maximum height of a firework? I never get you the airplane tower. <laughs> or? You know where to blow it up? Yeah, exactly. Do you want it to go, all right, let's let it, boom, <laughs> crap, because you're going to die. You know? <laughs> and it's not going to look very cool. Uh, it might, but probably not. If you're close enough, it would. But you want to attain maximum height, not come back down and then blow up because you're going to kill people. But attain maximum height so everyone can see it, and then rise it stops in midair, boom, right? That's what you want to have happen. So this is the model for that. Can we find max height? <coughs> Sorry for anyone who may have had a firework accident. I, it's a serious, serious, I can't say it without laughing. That's, you know, <laughs> seriously though. Have you ever seen a firework accident? They're not pretty. They're not cool. You don't want to do that. Uh, anyway, when is the when is the height going to peak? When the slope is zero. When what? Slope is zero. When the slope is zero, or in other words, when the velocity is zero. Do you, do you understand? Because it's going to climb, right? It's going to climb. And that's going to fall, but I can't even catch a pen. That's why I'm a mathlete, not an athlete. Uh, but if you if you toss it, if you if you toss up a firework or, or a pen or anything, it's going to increase speed and it's going to decrease speed. But right in between it, it's going to have a velocity zero, isn't it? And that's that would be the slope because velocity is a slope. It's a slope of our position curve. So we want to find the maximum height where the velocity equals zero. This happens where the velocity curve equals zero. How do you find the velocity curve? Do it. Why don't you take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and see when your firework is going to reach the maximum height. Remember that velocity equals the first derivative of a position curve, in this case, s. If we're able to find our velocity curve and say, oh, we want to find out when it's zero, when it's changing, and that's most likely to be when it's changing from increasing to decreasing. Now, if we solve that, you add uh, 32t to both sides. Eight? That's a pretty high firework. Yeah. So eight seconds. So you're going to launch it. One, two. Count to eight, and then you want the fuse to explode. You want to set that fuse for eight seconds. Uh, any more than that, you're going to be declining. Any less than that, you're still going to be going up. You won't get the maximum effect of that thing. Can we go understand the the problem here? Okay. Now something that is kind of cool. We can also use calculus. And if you ever take business calculus, or you, you take business classes, or marginal economics, uh, or managerial, no, I don't know if it's managerial, but I, I've had to take that as a business major as well. You can actually apply calculus to business and find out when you should stop producing goods. Because after a while, there's something called marginal cost. It's the cost of producing the next item, and sometimes that goes up. So you produce something, then produce the next one, it's more expensive than the next one. And what you want to do is match that up with your profit, right? You don't want to produce as much as possible, because what if you start losing money after a time? That would suck, wouldn't it? To be making more and more, it costs you more and more and more and more. Ultimately, you're going to cut into your profit, right? So we can talk about, well, I'm not going to get into all that, that would be business, all right, in, in economics. Uh, but I'll show you how you can find marginal cost.
So here's our cost function. I'll give you the definition of marginal cost too. Marginal cost is, it's actually the way that your cost is changing or the rate of change of your cost. If your cost is going higher or going lower, that would, that would be your, your rate of change of that. So, and that's marginal. It's the cost of producing an additional item. So, if you produce 200, what's the cost to produce 201? What's the cost to produce 202? The marginal is the next. So marginal cost would be the cost of the next item. Do you understand the idea of that? It's going to be changing, right? Because this is a changing curve. So this thing, let's see, what is that, upside down? Upside down parabola there. So your, your cost is going to be changing after a certain point. At this one, it looks like it's going to peak. Your cost is going to peak and then go down. At least that's what I'm, I'm interpreting that as. So your marginal cost is the cost of producing the, an additional item. And it's the rate of change of your cost. So that means it's the first derivative. Firstly, here's an interesting question. Uh, what's it cost to produce zero items? How much? It doesn't cost zero. Plug in, plug in zero. X is your number of items. Plug in zero. How much you got? Why would it cost you nine thousand dollars and say dollars to produce nothing? You have that equipment. Yeah, you have overhead, don't you? You have uh, rental. You have people. You know, pay them whether they sit there on their their hands or not. Right? You have equipment you're you're paying off. You have you have things that you're paying for electricity. So no matter what, you're paying nine thousand dollars. Okay. So this is most likely going to increase up to a certain point, and then uh, then let's see, should it decrease? Yeah. Yeah, it probably will at some point. This is also probably only for a certain range of, of units that you're producing. But let's go ahead. Let's find the marginal cost. Marginal cost would be the first derivative. Go ahead and take the first derivative. So wait, for each item, you add $9,000? No, no. If you plugged in 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, this is going to change, but it's going to be 9,000 plus that amount. Plus that amount. The 9,000 would be like you're starting out. Like if you produce nothing, it's still $9,000 because you have that overhead. So every, you know, every month, I, I helped run a business once, Every month, whether we sold archery equipment or not, we had to pay rent, right? We had to pay workers, we had to pay all this stuff. So whether we made arrows and sold them or, or not, it still costs us money. That's what this, this says. It says it's going to cost you money whether you have your equipment sitting there or actually working. Okay? So we we'll want to find marginal cost, the cost of producing the next item. Oh, so we're going to have... Did you find that as your derivative as well? Okay. Could you find out the cost of producing the 100th item? That would be... C prime <coughs> 1. What's your cost at the 100th item? Okay. Whatever, whatever we're talking in, uh, thousands of dollars, dollars, whatever it is, it's 160. Do you all get 160? Do 101 for me, okay? Does it seem right to you? Yeah. You got to think about what marginal cost means, okay? 
marginal cost means, and think about the curve here, the curve goes like this, marginal cost means the cost of producing the next function, or the ne next item. So this says, the more that, I, at this point, I'm producing the next one, this individual one costs me less to produce than that. Uh, maybe that's because, I don't know, you get some sort of a, a break, a price break if you buy a certain amount of equipment, or sometimes you have your workers who are working all day, um, it's easier for them to produce this amount than, than a previous amount, but that's ha that happens in business a lot. Your cost changes item to item. So this one costs $160 to make. This one only costs $159.6 to make. The next one would be even less, most likely if you did 102. Try 150, see what that does. You got 140? $140 if you produce for the 150th item. So we keep going, keep going. It might cost us less and less to produce as we keep on going and going and going and going. Uh, let's see, is your slope? Yeah, because your slope is always negative 0.4. Do you see that? So negative 0.4 says we're constantly dropping. So the more we produce, the less it costs us to produce. Now after a while, that's probably not going to be so great because we're going to have we're going to outpace our demand for our product. We're going to end up with a glut, which would cause our prices to probably fall. Uh, but this is the way that at least you can calculate your margin utility, the cost of the next item. How many people understood the cost of that? Again, I'm, I mean I'm not a business teacher, so I, I probably can't explain this as well as well I could have ten years ago. Firstly, uh, but as well as a business professor either. But I can tell you how marginal cost does work, and that's the way it works. Now. The next thing we get to do, you're going to enjoy this. You ready to enjoy this? Haven't you been having fun today? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You better say yes. We're going to talk about derivatives. That's a shocker. Yeah. 